Okay, everybody, let's do a book haul, shall we? I know I'm a bit late this time because, um, well, just things. So let's start. So first book, obviously, is Carrie. This is the Stephen King book for April. I'm looking forward to reading this. Obviously, I've seen the film. So Carrie White has a gift, the gift of telekinesis. We all know the story. Invited to prom night by Tommy Ross. It's a dream come true for Carrie. But events take a decidedly macabre turn on that horrifying, endless night as she's forced to exercise her terrible gift on the town that mocks and loathes her. Ooh. I've got two Marilyn books. I've got this one. This one is called Beauty Mark and it is basically a verse novel of Marilyn Monroe and it is by Carol Boston Weatherford. I don't think it'll take me long to read this one to be honest because as I said it's just very short. It looks interesting. I love the cover. I, I do like the cover. I think it's really really nice. And then I got Marilyn and I by Yuri Tor Torotsov. And so this is about this dress which was originally sold at Christie's in 1999 um, and the owner lent it to this author to get it photographed with various Marilyn fans uh, around the world. So it's a really sweet little book. Very nice. Yeah. And some of the people I know um, for various reasons and some of them I don't. So yes, quite a few books. I think it's 19 books this month, but there is a reason for that. Um, my mum gave me this one. This is The Surplus Girls Orphans by Polly Heron. Um, basically, Molly Watson's had enough, engaged for the last three years to a penny-pinching pedant. She finally decides she'd rather be a surplus girl than marry a man she doesn't truly love. Aware of the need to support herself if she was to remain single all her life, she joins a secretarial class to learn new skills and a whole world opens up to her. When she gets a job at St Anthony's Orphanage, she befriends caretaker Aaron Abrams, but a misunderstanding leaves them at loggerheads and damages her in the eyes of the children she's come to care so deeply about. Can Molly recover her reputation, her livelihood and her budding friendship before it's too late? So, yeah. Very nice. Uh, gosh, uh, of course I had to go into to the works and buy a few books from there, didn't I? So we got Carol Matthews. Uh, two of those. The Chocolate Lovers Club and The Chocolate Lovers Diet. So The Chocolate Lovers Club is first and says for Lucy Lombard, there's nothing that chocolate can't cure. So true. From heartache to headache, it's the one thing she can rely on and she is not alone. Fellow chocolate addicts Autumn, Nadia and Chantal share her passion and together they form a select group known as the Chocolate Lovers Club. Whenever there's a crisis, they meet in their sanctuary, a cafe called Chocolate Heaven. And with a cheating boyfriend, a flirtatious boss, a gambling husband and a loveless marriage, there's always plenty to discuss. And book two, there's another one I haven't got yet. Uh, Lucy thought she'd found her happily ever after with the gorgeous Aiden, but things aren't turning out the way she hoped they would. And she's not the only one with problems. Autumn's new boyfriend has yet to meet her parents. Nadia's husband has sworn he's given up gambling, but she's finding that hard to believe. And Chantal is doing all she can to save her marriage. It's clear that the four members of the Chocolate Lovers Club are going to need each other to get through their problems and a whole lot of chocolate. So it was nice easy reads, I think. And the third one on my three for five was uh, this one, Everything's Beautiful by Eleanor Ray. It's a pretty cover. When Amy Ashton's world falls apart, she starts a collection. Just a few keepsakes of happier times, some honeysuckle to remind her of the boy she loved, a chipped china bird, an old terracotta pot, things that others might throw away, but to Amy represent a life that could have been. Now, 11 years later, her house is overflown with the objects she loves and soon there'll be no room for Amy. But when a family move in next door, a chance discovery unearths a mystery. And Amy's carefully curated life begins to unravel. If she can find the courage to face her past, might the future she thought she'd lost still be hers for the taking? Hmm, sounds interesting. And they had, uh, oh, another one from my mum is this one. This is called The Hidden Child by Camilla Lackberg. This is the sort of books I like. Crime writer Erica Falk is shocked to discover an old Nazi medal amongst her late mother's belonging. Inspired to dig deep into her past, she visits a retired history teacher for answers, and two days later he's dead. Detective Patrick Hedstrom is on paternity leave, but his wife's inquiries appear to have set off a chain of murders, and he's finding it hard to keep out of the investigation. A terrible secret from the darkest days of World War II is coming to light and their family's histories are right at the heart of it. That sounds good. My mum said it's good. So it's a bit... Mm. And then I got three from Lidl's when they had them in for Mother's Day because, you know, why not? I got Lisa Jewell because, you know, I love Lisa Jewell. Invisible Girl. Yeah. 
midnight in an area of urban wasteland where cats hunt and foxes shriek, a girl is watching. When Safi Maddox was 10, something terrible happened and she's carried the pain of it ever since. The man she thought she was going to heal her didn't and now she hides, learning his secrets invisible in the shadows. Owen Pick is invisible too. He's never had a girlfriend. He's never even had a friend. Nobody sees him. Nobody cares. But when Sapphire goes miss missing from opposite his house on Valentine's night, suddenly the world seems to be watching Owen, accusing him, holding him responsible for Sapphire's disappearance. <sighs> Described as a wonderful slow burn gripper. If you can hear a noise um, off camera, it's the cat. She's in the room doing stuff. I don't know what she's doing, but she's doing stuff. And the next one is The House Across the Street by Leslie Pierce. Bit of a historical one, looking by the car and the dress. Yes, it's 1964. And 23-year-old Katie Speed is fascinated by Gloria and the ongoings at the house across the road. Who are the mysterious women arriving in a black car most Saturdays? Then one night, Gloria's house burns to the ground. In the wreckage, bodies are found and Katie's horror turns to disbelief when her father is arrested and charged with murder. Determined to prove his innocence, Katie sets out to uncover the truth about the mysterious house across the street. But that means uncovering the real murderer and risking her own life. Ooh, that does sound good. I picked up some good ones. And um, Ruth Ware. There's a lot of Ruth Ware going about. Uh, the Death of Mrs Westway. When Harriet Westaway receives an unexpected letter telling her she's inherited a substantial bequest from her Cornish grandmother, it seems like the answer to her prayers. There's just one problem. Hal's real grandparents died more than 20 years ago. Hal desperately needs the cash and makes a choice that will change her life forever. She knows that her skills as a seaside fortune teller could help her con her way to getting the money. But once Hal embarks on her de deception, there's no going back. She must keep going or risk losing everything, even her life. Well, from Ruth Ware, Ruth Ware is going to be quite good. And I've got six books from the same author because Paul bought me a set of um, Cold Case, Case novels by Peter May. And this is the Enzo McLeod Investigations. I'm going to read one of these soon. I'm very excited. Uh, so the first one is Extraordinary People. Uh, Paris, an old mystery. As midnight strikes, a man desperately seeking sanctuary flees into a church. The next day, his sudden disappearance will make him famous throughout France. A new science. Forensic expert Enzo McLeod takes a wager to solve the seven most notorious French murders armed with modern technology and a total disregard for the justice system. A fresh trail. Deep in the catacombs below the city, he unearths dark clues deliberately set as he draws closer to the killer and discovers he is to be the next victim. Woohoo! I love it. Uh, the next one, I think this is book two. I think they're in, I think I've got them in order. Let me just check. Freeze frame. No, but yeah. So the critic is the next one. Or critic. This is. Galac, Southwest France, an unsolved case. Gil Petty, America's most celebrated wine critic, is found strung up in a vineyard, dressed in the ceremonial robes of the Order of the Divine Bottle and pickled in wine. An uncracked code. For forensic expert Enzo McLeod, the key to this unsolved murder lies in decoding Petty's mysterious reviews, which could make or break a vineyard's reputation. An uncorked criminal. I like the little puns. Enzo finds that beneath the tranquil facade of French vin viticulture lurks a backstabbing, oh, the cat, a community riddled with rivalry and someone who is ready to stop him, even if they have to kill again. Here she is. She just, uh, oh, the books have all fallen down. Hello. Is that you? Is that you? Off you go. Oh dear. Freeze frame. Come on, I've got to check what order they go in, haven't I? Again. Oh dear, I do apologise. Black light blue, yeah. So the next one is black light blue. I love these covers. A death sentence, again in France. Diagnosed with a terminal illness, Enzo McLeod is running out of time to crack one of the most confounding of unsolved French murders. A death threat. His daughter is nearly killed, Enzo is mugged, and then he is arrested. Someone is trying to destroy his character. Someone is framing him for murder. A deathly enemy. Killers from the past will stop at nothing to halt Enzo, who must use all his forensic skill to solve the case before they succeed. And the next one is Freeze Frame. Ile de Gros, France, a frozen island. The tiny isle off the coast of Brittany is the scene of a murder left shrouded in mystery and grief. 
a frozen crime. Adam Killian's study has been left intact since his death, the perfect state for Enzo McLeod's forensic investigation. A frozen heart. Killian's widow is still hoping, widow is still hoping, the first suspect is still hiding, and the treacherous island itself still has a revelation for Enzo. And the next one is Blowback. I do have one book after this, which I haven't done yet, which was from my dad. Uh, Pays de Dom France. France. A silenced man. Footprints in the snow led to the murder scene of Marc Freyès, France's most celebrated chef, brutally shot before he could make the revelation of his career. A determined man. Seven years on and the mystery still raw, Enzo McLeod, forensic investigator, forays into the heated world of haute cuisine to uncover a bitter feuds and burning secrets. A hunted man. The Freyas family history is twisted as Enzo's own, and in his pursuit of truth, the depths of deceit threaten to consume Enzo, and that which he cherishes most. Ooh. I'm not taking a mick, really. I love these kind of books, and uh, I will be reading one of them fairly soon. See, this shelf's nice and empty. That's where are all the books I get in a month go, apart from those ones, which are TBR ones, mostly. But, you know, it's empty. Yay! And the last one is called Cast Iron. Slightly different, it's not blue. The other one's blue. The Girl in the Lake. In 1989, a killer dumped the body of 20-year-old Lucie Martin into a picturesque lake in the west of France. 14 years later, during a summer heatwave, a drought exposed her remains. The man on the case. No one was ever convicted of her murder, but now forensic... Oh, the cat's sneezing. Expert Enzo McLeod is reviewing this stone-cold case, the toughest of those he's been challenged to solve. The skeleton in the closet. Yet when Enzo finds a flaw in the original evidence surrounding Lucy's murder, he opens a dangerous Pandora's box, placing him and his entire family in peril. So I'm really excited that Paul got me those. Well, they were from Paul and Jennifer for Mother's Day. So I'm, I'd rather have books than flowers and chocolates because, you know, they'll last me a few months, they will, because I've got so many books to read. Yeah. Sorry. The last one uh, that I'm going to get is one my dad gave me that he picked up in a charity shop. It's called Rogue Target because we tend to <coughs> share books. So I, I get some sharing with my mum, my mum gets some shares with me and my dad and, and so on because we, I'll, I'll read anything. Rogue Target. One man's truth, a nation's downfall. Speedbird 117 takes off like any other flight from Heathrow. It will never reach its destination. The cause? To hear. A ruthless terrorist with a score to settle. With the Secret Service on red alert, senior analyst Stephen Holm is given an ultimatum. Find to hear and confiscate his devastating surface-to-air missiles or witness his nation's descent into disaster. Rebecca De Silva, meanwhile, accepts a seemingly routine job in the Philippines for a wealthy businessman. Little does she know that this will set a course in motion that she is unable to stop, a course that leads inevitably to Tahir. So those are all the books I got in the month of March. Have you read any of them? What do you think of them? Let me know. What should I be prioritising? What should I be reading? And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. I missed one. Sorry. There's another one from my mum. Flight Behaviour by Barbara Kingsolver. I've just, just found it. Um, yeah, this is one as well from March. Discontented with her life of poverty on a failing farm in the App Appalachians. Della Robia, a young mother, impulsively seeks out an affair. Instead, she discovers something much more profoundly life-changing. A beautiful and terrible marvel of nature. As the world around her is suddenly transformed by a seeming miracle, can the old certainties that her community have lived by for centuries remain unchallenged? Flight behaviour is a captivating, topical and deeply human story, touching on class, poverty and climate change. It explores the truths that we live by and the complexities that lie behind them. So, yeah, my mum read this, she said it was really good. But I, I missed it, so let's pop that up there with the rest of them. That really is all the books I got in March. I'm hoping not to get as many in April, but you never know with me. Should we try again and do a different one? <laughs>